Welcome to Rapid Motion Africa. This week we've got the challenge show. It's the Gold Wagon Challenge and the Altec Porsche Club Challenge. A big thanks as always to Gold Wagon for this action from the Gold Wagon Challenge at SWAT Corps in round two of the Pro Tour. Slightly bigger fields at SWAT Cups than what we saw in East London. And that always bodes well for good racing in the Gold Wagon Challenge. As the cars headed out for qualifying, it was going to be a tight affair amongst the top riders. But a big surprise at the end of the day with Derek Smallberger eventually ending up at the top of Class A. That was a huge, huge impact for the entire class. George Economides there in second place. And in Class P, it was Jake Jacobs and Barry Krunewald who topped the class. Derek, you've got to be stoked after that pole position, but the boys are coming close and hard behind you. Very close. Team gave us a very good car and they worked very hard with us. And um, yeah, it's going to be an inter interesting race. You, you're normally caught up in a couple of scuffles at uh, Swart Cops as well because it gets real close. This track's always close racing. It's a wonderful racing game. The Sabre Tech car is going to have his hands full because there's a big class of A cars heading down towards turn number one for the first time. And joining me in the commentary booth, as always, Graham Nathan. And a great start there by Derek. Uh, he managed to outdo George Economides. Voldy Mankis in there. Okay. Oh, Andy Gossman running slightly wide, and so is Needham. Derek goes up the inside, a queue behind him. It's Derek, then George, then Valdi, then uh, Etienne Prinsler. But around the outside, Needham goes around the outside to try and make up for the mistake he made in turn one. Has he got the slingshot? But a great start here by Jake Jacobs in the polo class. Yeah, this is the house that Jake's built as they go into turn one. No one catches him around Swat Cops, except for that man at the back. Hey, how do you throw your voice so well? You're in that car, Nathan at the back, and it looks like it's going to be thick and fast action here up in the, Class P. Up the inside there, Greg, sorry, is... Uh, Dion Holiday, he goes up the inside of Barry Krunewald, but has he been able to make it stick? George Economides goes to the front, Derek Smallberg is second, Valdi third, Gerard Henning around the outside of Etienne Prinsler here. Yeah, it's great stuff there between Prinsler as they come into turn six. Now it's the left hander, turn seven, heading down towards Goldwagen corner. It is so close between these drivers. Look in the background there. There you can see Eddie Rodriguez starting to move out. The SEW machine looking for a way pass. Can he make it stick on Prinsloo? Side by side, Karen Henning has got them in the rearview mirror and they just tuck in line of stern this time. That's probably a, a better part of Vela going through turn eight. George Economides has got his head down. He's trying as hard as he can. Andy Gossman goes up the inside. Eddie Rodriguez right around the outside of Andy Gossman. Has Andy going to make it stick or has uh, Eddie got the right line going into two? I think it's Eddie's turn. No, he hasn't let go. Andy Gossman tries around the outside. Eddie is probably going, hey buddy, we're slowing each other up here a little bit. Yeah, let's get to the action at the front end of Class P though. As they come flying through there, Nathan starting to make up lots of ground as he comes through in the Nathan's Motorsport Polo. He's now sitting in fifth place. It's Jake Jacobs, author in a Nathan's machine out in front. Can he keep it all together? And let's see whether or not Voter Roos has got anything in the time mining car. Voter is still getting used to his motor car. It's a brand new car. He crashed his car very severely at the end of last year and uh, Although East London was good for him, he's uh, battling a little bit at Swartworth, but uh, it won't be long and he'll be right there. Baldi Mankis locks up the brake, Gerard Hennen right behind him, he's going to push him. Is it going to be now? No, not this time, he decides next time. Now as they come through turn 6 and 7, now uh, heading down towards Goldwagen Corner, no changes at the front end. Derek Smallberger hasn't found a way past just yet on George Economides, baldi has got his hands full, so has Prinsler, and then the rest of the field comes streaming through there. Jean Gerber was having a big ding-dong battle, and looks like that's with Clayton LaRue. Clayton LaRue has joined the, the Class A fray from uh, Polos, and uh, a real big mix-up for him there. He's learning the hard way, and it was, <laughs> it's not as easy as in the Polos, but uh, out in front, George Economides, Derek Smallberger, Valdi Mankis, Gerard Hennen, Etienne Prinsler right behind Gerard. He's gone to a challenge from the national circuit and he's doing a great job here. He certainly is and uh, getting a little bit of uh, extra seat time for Swartkopf for later on. But as they come through turn three, heading up towards four, which is age of corner now. It looks like no changes in the first seven cars. There you can see Economy Dish from Smallberger. There goes Valdi Mikey's Henning. That's Brunsler, Gossman, Rodriguez and Gavin Ross in there too. So a good drive from him. There's uh, a bit of body damage on uh, Clayton LaRue's car. He's probably having to do a little bit of pushing and shoving more so than he's used to. Uh, but out in front, no change. George Economides is doing a great job. Valdi, Gerard and uh, Etienne. These guys uh, are probably biding their time, saving their tyres, trying to get it to the end. Let's have a look out the inside. No, this is Sean Dodd going around the outside of Barry Krunovald. These guys are going side by side. That is turn four. That is pretty, pretty much one of the fastest corners on this racetrack. Look at it. Look how evenly matched these cars are. Who's going to do it on the brakes? Will it be Barry or Sean? Sean goes in deep. Barry's on the inside. He manages to turn it tight and not run out of road. 
unreal racing here by these two guys. They are handlebar to handlebar, as they would say in the bikes, and mirror to mirror in the cars. And sitting Nuki's right, on tail. Yeah, sitting right, <laughs> behind me is, uh, right behind them is the camera car. Yeah, the camera car, whatever. <laughs> Out there having some fun, Nathan having some fun in his own car. But it looks like the fun and games has not ended here, because Class A is starting to heat up. Oh, the touch between Baldy Monkeys and Karen Ham. That could have ended up in big tears. Let's do turn three. There you go. Prince Lou makes up one more position. And Valdi Mikey's has now been demoted two positions in one corner as they get onto the back straight away. Yeah, Valdi didn't want to let go then. Gerard wanted a bit more race track, but uh, a little bit naughty from Gerard's side. And uh, they got away with it, but Valdi's probably spitting nails in that motor car right now. Looks like there might be a problem there on Gossman's car. He's starting to fade a little bit as they come onto the braking markers. We're on board with Valdi. Can he try something on the brakes here? Not able to do it. But he tucks in right behind the Biz, Biz Hub car. And that is Gerard Henning just ahead. The Silver Dream race of the RBTS machine trying to catch the first two. It's Economidi still out in front. And Derek Smallberger still tucked in in second. On board here with Valdi. He's doing a great job. This motor car has been off the pace a little bit. And uh, they've managed to get it up there. And it's going like the clappers. But this that's one's not Andy Gossman, that's the end of it for him. That's a big pity though. Looks like Nathan's up into second place. Can you believe that? He's got ahead of Dodd and Krunewald as they come into Goldwagen Corner. Sean Dodd's going to hang on, possibly in the Coppenon car, to try and take it. But we're still looking at the halfway point of the race. Six laps to go, and there's still plenty of action to come from Class B and from Class A. A bit further back there, you can see Votaru still getting to grips with his new car. And right on his tail, a brand new man, Pete Putkita. Peter's done a great job. He's been riding bikes for years and years and years. Decided this year, it's time to get into a car and see what it's like. But let's go back to the A-Class uh, battle. Gerard Henning putting his head down. He's trying as hard as he possibly can to get behind uh, Derek Smallberger. Derek wants to get past George. George knows this racetrack and he knows exactly how to make that golf one as wide as possible so that uh, Derek has to work super hard. He's certainly working very hard in second place, but the man oh. working this is hard. Look at that. Prince is trying to go up the inside. Can he make it stick? Side by side, mirror to mirror. A little bit of forcing wide there. Oh, it could end up in tears. It is going to end up in tears. There's Henning into the wall, and oh, Prince Lee gets tagged by him coming off the side. That was all about Etienne Prince Lee just not backing off at all. Just keeping it buried through turn two as they came through. Here's the replay. Check this out in slow mo. There's a little tap between Prince Lou and the curb. He runs a bit wide, forces Henning just to the outside. Henning tries to come back and take the line. And as he does that, you can see Prince Lou is not giving up. And there's the spin and bang into the wall, bang into the car. Some big damage there from them, Greg. Uh, but yes, the brother. Yes, uh, Etienne's brother. Ian Prince, uh, he's just sitting there going, OK, well, I'll have this. You guys go riding to each other. I'll go past Cl Clayton the Rue and uh, off I go. Looks like he's also got a bit of battle scar, so it runs in the Prince Lou family, I'd have to say, because it looks like uh, Clayton LaRue might have had it coming together with him, but the MFC car is doing well. Clayton LaRue in the Mod LaRue Motors Polo, and right on his tail, all of a sudden, Needham is there, and so is the ex Craig, uh, that's Craig Murray. Craig Murray absolutely hauling. This is a race for about fourth or fifth position. Can you believe there, there's no space between them? They are hard at it. So from first right through to wherever you want to race, you will race in Class A. I just love the fact that we've got Nash in there as well in that GTI. I love that car. It's a mint condition GTI racing in Class A. And he tends to stay out of all this type of action. Yeah, he doesn't like to bend it too much, but he's not scared to Nash his teeth if he has to. Uh, we've got Eddie Rodriguez going onto the, onto the back of the Class Class A first and second battle here. Will he be able to get there in time? Is George holding up Derek enough for uh, Eddie to get there and make a difference? The possibility of Eddie Rodriguez becoming a factor at the end of this race, but as they go onto the back straight away, we go back to this battle. Look at that, need him up the inside, having a look. Can he get past Clayton LaRue? Clayton LaRue's going to hold that outside line and try and keep it there all the way into turn two. He's got the inside line now for turn two, so it didn't work out there for Needham, but it has helped Craig Murray. Late breaking from him, he might be able to sneak through. The precision car is all over Needham, and Needham is going to have to keep his eyes on the mirrors. He goes up the inside, over the little bit of dirt that's on the inside of that corner. Crowd loving life here at SWAT Corps, but as they get onto the back straight, here's the battle once again. He's got through, Needham's got ahead, and Murray sneaks through in AJ Bordesi. Touched up there, Clayton LaRue slams the door, Craig Murray decides not here, this is not the place to, to have an accident or to tap, and sitting behind them is Nash, he's sitting there going, listen, when you guys are finished crashing each other, whoa, Clayton LaRue rocks the brakes up, Needham takes evasive action, if he didn't take evasive action there, he would have got it straight in the door. And check who got the best drive out of everybody there, Craig Murray just sneaks through and says, right, Jokes have been playing around too much, I'm coming through, I want out of this, I want to finish up as high up on this podium as I can, and right now it's a of the two of you. And that's exactly what Nash is doing. Nash is sitting there and up the inside goes Needham again. Quentin Needham is trying absolutely everything he knows to get a hold of to get a hold of uh, 
Craig Maria right now. Nesh goes up the inside of, of both of them. Can they? No. Needham stands the door. Nesh goes up the inside of Clayton. And that's enough for him right now. Yeah, let's see if he can make it on the break show. Clayton Maria's going to have the inside line. I don't think he'll be able to get him. No, he can't. And Nesh has to just tuck in behind. That's probably a good thing to do. I don't want to get involved in that scrap too much because those two orange golf ones and the polo are going at it. Speaking of orange cars, here's the battle for first, second, and third with three corners to go. Eddie Rodriguez has got right there though, Greg. Look at that. He's right there. He's putting pressure on Derek. Derek no longer has to worry about only George. He's got to worry about uh, Eddie right now. And as you can see, the gap is starting to grow. Derek going defensive. He's making his polo incredibly wide. But uh, George Economides now can focus on working forward and not having to worry about anything behind him. But that is it. That is the finish line. George Economides, Derek Smallberger, Eddie Rodriguez and Valdi Mankis. Great drive from our top four, and you can see the Sabertech crowd are very happy with their performance. Oh, look at that! Nathan having a look up the inside of Jake Jacobs. You didn't see him coming till right till the end. Jake's hang on. Nathan in second, and Sean Dodd in confirmation of Class A. Economides, Smallberger, Rodriguez, Mikey's, and Gavin Ross in fifth. George, this morning when we saw the qualifying times, we knew it was going to be a tight race, but wow, that was a tight race. Yeah, it was incredible from our disastrous East London to the car just coming back, and I mean, it loves this track. The competition from Derek has been phenomenal. I mean, getting pole, uh, I was blown away by that, and good luck to him, and I think he's come a long way. He came from polos, and I see that the class is dwindling, so I think they must all come back to class A. In B's and C's, also a very tight affair. Yannick van Ruin was the man to try and catch, and Quinton Thompson did just that in the class B's, and Jason Finney took his maiden pole in the class C gold bargains. Quinton, SWAT cops, your turn at the front. How did that pole position feel? Uh, very good. Uh, we, we actually got it by 0.6 of a second, which is a, it's a good advantage. Yeah, we just need to get the start right. That's all it is racing here. It's like Supercross. You just got to get to the first corner first. We can do that and keep uh, Yanni behind us. Yanni's a very uh, seasoned campaigner. He'll keep me busy. He certainly will. Let's see if they can get off the line. Oh, Yanni van Rooyen left on the line there. He was caught napping on the line. It looks like it's going to be Adrian Dalton who sneaks up into second place around the outside. A ready action coming into turn one. Dalton's on the inside. Oh! Massive crash and a tag and people just going left, right and centre. It's off the circuit, it's on the circuit. There's tar involved, there's some dirt involved. Derek Minnie is not going to come off in the best of wares. And neither is the man on pole, Quinton Thompson, at the back of the field. Right at the back, Adrian Dalton out in front. He is probably sitting there going, what happened now? How did I get to the front? And now I've got to do all the work all on my own. Well, certainly a lot of work to do. You've got Alna Cruiser right behind him, and then it comes a gaggle of cars. Got to try and work out what happened there. Justin Taylor goes sneaking through. There's Yanni van Rooyen. Now, he was caught on the line, fortunately, because when he came into turn one, all of the action had already happened. So he could just drive around it. Derek Minnie trying to get back as quickly as he can. He was the man who was tagged and turned around completely. And Quinton Thompson with a massive job on his hands now. Great, Nate. He has, he has indeed. He's got to come right from the back. But have a look at We've got Alna Cruiser ahead of Philip. And uh, so Daniel Sebastian is sitting there right behind them going, uh, when you guys sort out your family sort of stories, can we go racing? <laughs> yeah, that's what it's going to be all about. This is the Class C battle. You can see Jason Finney already coming to grips with Andre Needham. He's in the uh, orange wheeled Silver Dream Racer. Just behind them looks like that Smallburger. So Charles Smallburger now. And then just behind them is Charles Derrick. So look at these guys. Absolutely hammer and tongs from the word going Class C. They're, they're hard at it. Uh, Charles Warburger probably is sitting there in the best place, best seat of the house to sit and learn. And it's Sebastian that locks the brakes up up the inside. He tried to make a move on Philip here in, uh, for, for third position and uh, managed to lock it up. Slide past. Philip saw it coming and just said, yeah, yeah, I've seen that game before. Yeah, just go past and uh, resume your position. Thanks very much. Justin Taylor. Then it's Yanni van Rooyen. Looks like it's Peter Thompson. Now, Peter Thompson's in line with uh, possible overall championship contention here. So he's got to move up as quickly as possible. Derek Minnie's got going. Although that car mm, doesn't sound too good the last time it came past us. As he moves up one position, gets ahead of Bartram. Derek's got a whole bunch of damage in the left front of that motor car, in the door, all over the show. He was the one ended up losing out big time, spinning around. But have a look at this. Philip Cruz under pressure from Daniel Sebastian. These guys are at it outside, inside, whichever way he possibly can. Dalton has got his head down. He's trying to get away. Elna is trying to hang on to him. She's back in racing in Class B for the first time this year and is doing a great job. It's fantastic to see her step up, and that's given Jason Finney an opportunity to drive the spare car for the Giulio Sabatini team. So you can see it's Cruz's two and three. Oh, there, I was going to say. Oh, that's a big pity. Derek Minnie 
We picked up on the problem that he had, and he's going to pull into pit line, so that's the end of race one for him. And here comes Class C. So Jason Finney's got to the front. Looks like Andre Needham is now under pressure from Smallburger and from Giles Derrick as they come in a gold bargain corner. Oh, it is four golf ones, and there's nothing between them. How's this for racing in Class C? This is the, the entry-level racing field, and they are at it. There are five Class C cars within a second. Right behind them, we've got Henry. Henry Cockle is also there in the green one. He's also sitting there going, you guys make an error? I'm right there. Yannick van Rooyen doing a great job though. Although he fluffed the start, he's probably in the, probably did himself a favor to sit there. Oh, Daniel Sebastian throws it at turn four. This side, that side, fitting it both sides. He's playing golf. The only time he's on the fairway is when he crosses it. But up the inside here of uh, Philip Cruiser goes Yanni van Rooyen. Run, he's going to have a look here. Phillips around the outside. He's actually got the better line for turn eight. Believe it or not, there's two corners away from turn eight, but he sets it up for turn eight from here. Let's see if we can put it all together now. Cruiser goes defensive. You can see he's trying to play the tail gunner roll there for his wife, Elna, who's out in second place. Starting to close down on Adrian Dalton, who's led out after the incident in turn one. We're at the halfway point. And up towards turn five, Sassel Corner, you can see the Class C leaders have now caught on to the back end of Daniel Sebastian after he recovered and came back after playing a bit of golf, as you mentioned. But now it is Class C, Smallberg and Finney. Finney giving Smallberg a real good run for his money now. I don't think he's going to interfere too much with the points here because he's only on a one-off drive, but it's great to see him there. And uh, Charles Smallberg is definitely learning a hell of a lot on how to block with Jason Finney on his tail. This is experience of uh, the utmost importance to him, Greg. He, to ride with somebody as experienced as Jason who can go inside, outside and just put huge amount of pressure, move a lot in the mirror. Uh, sorry, having a look up the inside here goes Yanni van Rijn. Yanni goes through on Elna Cruiser. He's gone up into second place. So from that bad start and avoiding the incident, Yanni van Rijn has managed to get himself right up into second with uh, just more than half of the race expired. I just love the fact that uh, he's changed from the incredible golf and gone to the all yellow gold wagon sponsored machine. And it looks like it's paying off here because in Class B, he is becoming a real contender for this championship. As he heads up into turn number seven, there's Philip Cruz in third. A little further back, that's Peter Thompson. Then it's Justin Taylor still hanging on ahead of Quinton Thompson. But now as we come into Gold Wagon Corner, Van Rooyen has his sights set on that Silver Dream racer out in front. And so is Jason Finney. He wants to get past Charles Smallberger to, to teach him a bit more. Locks the brakes up ever so slightly. Charles doing a superb, superb job of... of Soaking up the pressure, he hangs on to the line, missing the apexes a little bit, but that's just a, a bit of experience that is lacking here. But a great job, look at this racing. He doesn't block, he takes the race line and he goes as hard as he can. Andre Needham just in the background, still in third place. He's ahead of Charles Derrick, so that's the battle for second and third in Class C's as they start another lap and come down the main straightaway into turn one. Jason Finney putting the pressure on and continuing to put that pressure on as they come into turn two. Now let's see whether Smallburger has to uh, buckle under that pressure or will he just keep it all together? He keeps it perfect together. Then we go back to third and fourth and Needham has got Giles Derrick all over the back of him and Giles wants past big time. Giles wants past. He, he's used to running with the Charles Smallburger, but Charles upped his game a but so Giles has got to get past the Needham and go after him. Have a look at this. The battle between first and second. The gap has got smaller. Philip is sitting there going, come on guys, let's go. Into Goldwagen corner one more time. Peter Thompson starting to close in. So is Quinton Thompson. Both of them have got ahead of Justin Taylor. Just in the background there, we can also see uh, that is uh, and Andrea Bate. So Andrea Bate also tucked in with these guys as they come onto the closing stages. Looks like uh, Yanni van Rooyen is going to try something up the inside into turn two. He has Not a able look. to make it stick, but he had a very big look there. Dalton runs wide. That might cost him. Check out that Goldwagen car. Watch the acceleration on the Silver City Golf. Man, he's got this thing absolutely dialed into Swat Golf and take care then, bye bye now, Adrian Dalton. Adrian is uh, probably kicking himself for making that error. He's going to dive in behind uh, Yanni and see if he can't slingshot him up into turn five. If he stays really, really tight, he might be able to go up the inside. But I'm sure Yanni knows that body trick and he's going to defend that line. He's not going to let him have it all his own way this time. But he's opened up a little bit of a gap already. Adrian ran a touch wide through four. This is it. This is the turn that it's going to count and he doesn't get close enough. Well, they bring in quality automotive parts, and I can tell you something, there's some quality automotive parts on that gold wagon machine, because Yanni van Rooyen is pulling away from Dalton. He's managed to come from about 8th place on the road after a terrible start from the front row, and now leads going into the closing stages of this first race. There you go, Dalton looks up the inside, but can't make it stick, because Yanni van Rooyen slams the door shut through gold wagon corner to take the checkered flag. Behind Yanni, Adrian Dalton, Alma Cruiser and Philip Cruiser. 
in class here. It's going to be Charles Smallberger. Will Jason Finney give him a run to the line? Is he going to try something into the final corner? Finney has kept him very honest, but Smallberger has driven a tremendous race. Jason Finney and the Julio Sabatini machine is just loving being in class C as they come across the line. Smallberger will take the victory, so he's not going to affect the points too much, but Jay has had a great day in the office. Confirmation of the results as they come through there. Yannick van Rooyen taking it from Dalton and Cruiser. And then Class C, Smallberger, Jason Finney, and eventually Andre Needham in third place. Yannick van Rooyen, that was one amazing race. Tell me how it rocked, because from the start it looked like everyone was sleeping. Yeah, yeah, we all got, uh, uh, you know, confused. We were told that we are going to have a warm-up lap, an extra warm-up lap, because of the uh, delay in the start. And obviously it didn't happen, you know. And uh, when I got down the straight, I saw that everybody was racing. So I thought, this is it, let's go for it. So yeah, this is one of the hardest races I've ever had, actually. And uh, you make his life hard as well, because you had to come through the traffic and it came right down to the last lap. Yes, yes. Fortunately, the guys are all driving very, very nicely. You know, they, 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 they see you coming from behind, they leave you a bit of space, and yeah, it wasn't all that hard, really. Charles, that was an absolutely fantastic race. You and Jason Finney just setting the track alight. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to thank my sponsors, Remconics, and also Out Racing for preparing a great car. Yeah, the, we were going, eh? um, we had a bad start, me and Jason, Andre Needham got past us. And then, yeah, we had to get passed back and we managed to do that around the fourth lap. It was me and Jason. I managed to get past Jason, he had gold bargain corner. And uh, I could stay in front from there. For some more gold bargain action, join us just after the break. <laughs> Back to the arena of motorsport and a continued action from the Gold Bargain Challenge at the Pro Tour. Round number two. It's now race two for classes A and P. More of the same, I think, Nate, is heading into the black stuff. Flat out, out of the gate goes George Economides. A great start by George. Eddie Rodriguez is right behind him this time. Derek Smallberger was third on the road. He's going to go defensive, make sure that he stays in that position. Eddie Rodriguez has a look at the outside. Around the outside comes Quinton Needham, though. He goes from... I'm not sure where on the start, but right up to fifth position. Baldi Mankies has probably got Needham right on his outside. Baldi doing a great job. He's got to get in right behind Derek and try and stay with that train because as soon as he loses the toe, they're gone. Speaking of the toe, there's a lot to be done here. And can they get into the toe of Jake Jacobs as they come into turn number two? Nathan at the back starting to make his way through as quickly as possible. Up the inside of both the time mining machines, Pete Pochita is going to use some of the uh, motorcycle racing lines to try and outdo Graham Nathan and does so. Can you believe what's going on there, Nate? Right around the outside. There they go. Both the rest in the in the one time mining car and Pit Pot get there in the other one. Pit having a look inside, outside. Let's see, let's go back to the front. Bolly Mank is under huge pressure. Quinton Needham getting it all squarely with uh, Gavin Ross sitting right there going, hey, come guys, we're losing touch. And Gavin goes up the inside. Can he make it stick? Yes. Quinton Needham goes around the outside with Gavin. Look at the respect from these drivers. No banging, no slamming into each other. This is what we need in nationals. Yeah, we certainly do. It's great to see a lot of respect being shown by the drivers. Gavin Ross has made it stick. It took him two corners to do, but he set it up from two corners back, and it does pay off. So it's all about uh, the traction. He's losing it. Though. Oh, look at that. He's losing Needham it. comes straight back straight in. Straight back up the inside. John Carver around the outside of Etienne. Let's have a look. This is a drag race. Gavin Ross has got the has got the draft. All the drive and let's go. Jake Schalke, Barry Quillevolt in class B and uh, Fionn Holiday ahead of uh, Sean Dodia. Yeah, the Coppin on car didn't get a great start and it's uh, three Polo Classics ahead of the Polo player. The Polo player coming up the inside and a good drive there from Dodd. He managed to get the drive out of turn one, onto the brakes into turn two and up to third place onto the back straightaway. Dion just going to gather up his thoughts and get going. Uh, he's going to try as hard as he can. On board camera from uh, Mark Hoyer yeah, as, we, as we see running towards Dion Holloway down to the turn four, let's have a look. Can I take the slipstream and get really close so that we can have a go? Not quite yet, but you're right there for turn five, I think, Nate. You might be able to get him at turn five if everything goes according to plan and you can get him on the brakes heading up towards Sassel Corner now. Did you see that talent through that corner, Greg? I did, but uh, what happened at turn two in Cape Town? I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> right, onto the braking markers. Look how close you get. Man, that's a VTEC trailer on the back of that polo. And Holiday is going, where did he come from? Up the inside here, Etienne Prince attacks Gavin Ross, Etienne and Gavin, Jean Gerber takes evasive action to miss that all up. Through the middle goes uh, Clayton LaRue and Craig Marais 
reversing forward, whichever gear works, it's get out of the way, and they're on the way again. Clayton, it's, Clayton it's was very lucky there, very, very lucky. So was Craig Marais, Jean Kaber had to go around the outside, but it was a case of days of thunder. Pick a line you can drive through. That's Absolutely. exactly what they did. Absolutely. On board now with my car as Dion goes into turn one. Let's see, lifts a wheel, twists that polo, the, the three-wheeling polo running right through turn one. Great job there by Dion. Up the inside into two though. Yeah, looking for a way past, and Nate makes his way into what is now fourth place on the road. So two more cars, and he'll be on the tail of his stablemate and teammate in the Nathan's Polo up front. That's Jake Swatkops. As I said, this is the house that Jake's built. You cannot catch him at Swatkops. We're going to die. We're definitely going to try as hard as we possibly can. Great driving there by Dion, Sean Dodd. Gary, Barry Krunovog, they're all having a go at catching Jakes. Check out Class A. Look how hot it's getting at the front end of this field. Economides oh. with uh, at the inside. Rodriguez going to try something here. The two, oh, that's not going to work. That is going to put them into a big spin. Oh, there's the tap. And into the wall. Watch out, everybody, on the wall. Man, that was bad. I didn't think that was going to work out too well. Economides has broken a brand new Golf 1. That is game over, that car. And I think we might have to get to a red flag situation or a safety car because that car is right on the main straight. It's actually halfway on the main straight and halfway on the dirt. And you can see in the background, Prince Lerd to take evasive. Here's the slow-mo. Eddie goes up the inside. Not quite far enough, I don't believe. George decides to go defensive. He blocks. He has the right to... Eddie not quite past B pillar. They tag. He tries to take evasive action. The brake lights flash to try and miss it, but slams it straight into the wall. I'm not quite sure that was all uh, George Economides' error. In fact, I'm convinced it wasn't, that uh, we'll have to wait. But a good thing to see that George Economides gets out of the motor car and walks away. He's probably mad as hell with that uh, whole scenario. Brand new motor car in the wall, but he's okay. Yeah, he's okay, the car isn't, safety car is out though. The Pretoria and Toyota Corolla comes out onto the track and that'll give us a chance just to sort things out and pull that golf off the racing line into the middle of the circuit but what a pity it's a brand new machine that they're pulling off on the side and Nate I don't think you can repair that one buddy I don't even think we're going to get it to uh, any of the panel beaters that can do any work to that I don't think they'll even try Derek Smallberger goes from third position straight into first position now the pressure's on him Eddie Rodriguez still in second he managed to miss that whole lot after George uh, hit the wall so it's Valdi third Quinton Needham fourth and uh, is that Etienne in fifth? Etienne Prince? Yes, it is. The MFC car in fifth place. Then we've got Craig Maria just ahead of Jean Gerber. Now, Gerber lost out quite a bit. So did Gavin Ross and uh, Ian Prince Lou too. So those guys are starting to come through thick and fast. But at the front end of this field, it is all about Smallberger. And with the pace he had in qualifying, if he's got this kind of gap, I don't think they're going to catch him. Well, if he manages to hang on to it. But as we have a look at Voteris, driving a drill. Oh, that's where my car runs out, runs out of a clutch. Oh, you're running out of clutch. I thought you were slowing down to do the camera work. We have to pay you for something but come on now <laughs> no 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 not all about work there's a lot of play involved here yeah i think what you're going to do is play with third and fourth gear here and just get yourself to the line if i'm not mistaken anyway back to the front end and class a is definitely heating up rodriguez has already been involved in some action voldy mike is in third then it's needham then we've got prince Lou, and on his tail is clayton larue and clayton larue now has a chance of getting into the top five in his uh, third outing for this particular category the saber tech crew is cheering derek Big time now. This is the first time he's led an A-class race in almost a year, if I'm correct. And uh, it's all through hard work between him and Andre. Uh, they've worked really, really hard to get this motor car where it is, and they've done a great job. They certainly have. Well done to the entire team and the Sabertech uh, crew on the side, loving life, because their man is at the front. But the racing is not done. We are only at the halfway point, Nate. So there's plenty of action to come. There's always racing to come. Jay Jacobs now under pressure from Sean Dodd. The restart. Barry Krunewald is sitting right there. Voter is going down into turn eight. Under pressure from Dion. Let's have a look here. Voter is still doing a great job there. Learning about that motor car every time he turns the racetrack. We've got Andy Gossman coming back through the field. He's trying as hard as possible because he, as you saw in the first heat, he had a failure and had to start at the back. Yeah, and he just got through when all the action happened at uh, turn number eight, Goldwagen, where we saw cars into the wall. And here we go with two corners and two laps to go. There's still plenty of action, as I said. And I think it's going to be between the SEW and Sabre Tech machines. One Polo Classic versus one Polo player. Absolutely. There's actually two Polo players because Valdi's not that far back. Derek doesn't want to give this position up. This is the first time he's led for a long time in this A-class premier category or premier class in the category and he just wants to have a go right to the end as we saw eddie rodriguez though is not going to let him have it his own way he is a true racer he is going to go at it as hard as he possibly can he'll take the chances 
and he'll make the chances when he needs to. Looks like there's a problem there on Jake Jacobs' car. He's slowing down. Dodd has caught onto the back of him. He has third place in uh, Class P. And then we go a little bit further back. gossman has got ahead of the battle. That rage is still between Nathan, Voterus. Oh, looks like Voter. Oh, Voter's tossed it. Can you believe it? Into Goldvogel corner, all on his own. I think the pressure of being, you, you being behind him got to him, bud. Yeah, I reckon he was probably looking in the mirror when he should have been watching. Oh, oh big oh. slide by Barry Grunewald. Sideways action. That is a drifting line. Oh, I think wow. there might be something on that corner, Nate, to be very honest. I'm not quite sure what's been dropped there. There's no flags waving yet, but you don't see Barry Grunewald get Apollo out of shape that badly without a little bit of outside assistance. Let's see whether or not these two boys feel it when they get down there. But right now, they've still got three corners to go before they get to turn one. Rodriguez is hassling him, and he wants past the Sabre Tech machine big time. Look at that inside wheel not even moving it was completely stationary and then it just spins up all of a sudden Derek is twisting that car all over the place Eddie goes up the inside Derek sees him coming do they give each other enough room they do this time Eddie gets out of it Derek head down one lap to go this is that slippery corner if there is something there I like it well it's going to go into now this is Smallberger leading out oh there's, there's definitely something on the track because Rodriguez has lost it and oh that's a big one into the wall behind him it looks like Baldi's lost it as well so two of the Polo players, the two that were in contention are completely out of it. These guys have missed it though, so maybe there wasn't something there, maybe they've just cleaned it up. There comes six, seven, eight, ninth place, tenth place, no there's nothing there. Only those two and three cars were affected, so second place and third place now being demoted down to almost eighth, ninth and tenth spot. They're right at the back of the field, there comes Sean Dodd, he didn't have a problem through turn one. Maybe these guys are just pushing incredibly hard. Baldi got off the throttle to uh, have a look-see. It's uh, a couple more cars through turn one. Nah, looks okay. Jake Jacobs is now unfortunately second. down to second. Yeah, he's second. Can you believe that? I was about to say, Sean Dodd has got through. Let's see whether Barry Grunewald will be able to get through as well. Looks like he's done that as well. So Jacobs is now down into third place. Checkered flag is going to come out and Sabre Tech are going to take their victory with their driver, Derek Smallberger, at the wheel. Way ahead of anybody else due to that incident the last time they came through. But check out who's in second. Ian Prinsloo comes through in second place and Quinton Needham eventually in third. They think to themselves, what just happened? This is uh, the, the, the leader in Class P. That is Sean Dodd. That is the first time he's won a Class P race. He is over the moon. That car of his doing a great job. He's done a whole bunch of work on it in the off-season, lightened it as much as he could, and he's there now. Grunewald in second. Smallberger takes Class A. Derek, that's a great day at the office, but that last race, it wasn't easy by far. It wasn't easy. It was cars all over the show, guys spinning into the walls. We had to work really hard. I mean, avoid some accidents, to stay out of trouble and get the win. You and Rodriguez, that last lap, tell me about it. He came and he was there and he tried to dive me and I, bumped, I went on the inside, he turned me wide, we saved it. So it was an absolutely fabulous lap. I mean, uh, got it going and then he went off on his own and then turned one and on, the, on the lap. I don't know what happened there. Oh, B's and C's, uh, they don't need to worry about anything on the circuit because uh, mid-afternoon thunderstorm has now added a bit of wetness to the track and that won't dampen any of the spirits for the racing. <laughs> well, it might just because it's super wet, but uh, the racing is going to be thick and fast. The guys are going to tiptoe, find the grip, find out whether or not these semi-slicks are working in the rain or not, how hot they've got to get. A whole bunch of homework through turn one and turn two, yeah. Yeah, Thompson's got the lead. He's uh, maintained the whole shot after him being on pole position. Yanni von Rooyen this time didn't get bogged down on the start. Then we get Class C underway. It looks like Jason Finney is going to use his experience in the wet. Oh, he's gone. He's left these boys behind on the line. Giles Derrick didn't have an answer. Neither did James Fuller. He's in that uh, Rizla colored machine at the back. Also a new man to the series. And it looks like Charles Smallberger will go into turn two in second place. He does indeed. Charles Smallberger, Giles Derrick sitting there in third and fourth position but let's go back to the front of the field we got Quinton Thompson leading out the field this is the, the most difficult job Yanni van Rooyen running really wide GC runs so wide it looks like he wants to go and have a drink at the clubhouse yeah, I think uh, the cadence braking wasn't working so well on that golf one he needs to have a chat to the gold Vogan boys and see if they can find him some wet weather breaks as they come into turn number seven and start sorting themselves out here on the wet race racing everywhere in the wet in the dry these guys do it gold Vogan racing is in incredible Look, look at the racing. Although it is super slippery, they've got very little... Oh, is that Philip running out of talent? It is indeed. Philip runs it ever so slightly wide. Gathers it all up again and off he goes. He goes from about fourth to ninth. One corner. 
I think the Nathan's Motorsport guys have got air conditioners in their hey, cars. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <slowly> <laughs> so they can see a little bit better. Because you look at him out of Cruz's window, you couldn't see anything. I didn't even see where the brake marks are. Oh, Justin Taylor's missed the brake markers as well. Just in time, I don't think so. No brakes there. Yeah, uh, just, uh, just enough, just not enough brakes, eh? Exactly. And uh, off goes Justin. But uh, that's what you've got to learn. You've got to study how much you can. And as soon as the brake snatches, your brain's telling you leave the brake and your foot's going, are you mad? Exactly. I don't think you can leave the brake at all, especially in these kind of treacherous conditions. Now they come through Age of Corner, heading up towards Sassel. Yannick van Rooyen's recovered quite nicely. And we see Justin Taylor starting to come through the Class C battle. That's Daniel Sebastian. Last time he went through here. Oh, let's hang on and see what happens this time. Oh, he keeps it all together this time, though. Good driving, Daniel Sebastian. Absolutely. Yeah, we're on board with Philip. Philip is behind Daniel. They're going up into the top. Can they both leapfrog Sebastian? Yes, no lockup of brakes. Great driving there from both these guys. Philip runs slightly Oh, wide. no, it's the red rocket of uh, Hendricks that ran wide there. So it was Hendricks that ran wide. He was the man that I think Daniel Sebastian was watching, and that's allowed both... Uh, oh, here's Jason Finney now on two So yeah. the leader in Class C has caught up onto the back end of Class B already. This is how close the racing is, and just how good Jason is in the rain. Uh, Jason is doing a superb job with that 1600. That is uh, probably about 20 kilowatt less horsepower, which is probably not a bad thing in the rain because the wheel spin is less, but uh, the brakes are exactly the same, and Jason doing a great job here. He's all over the back of the Class B cars already. This is Class uh, B's, and this is the leaders. So you can see Chad Bartram and Mini are back in the fray, and this time not being outdone by any mishaps through turn number one, but the battle between the two of them could end up in tears, especially if they keep up that kind of pace. Oh, Philip Cruiser runs it wide again. Philip locks the brakes up. As you heard, the motor car just goes quiet, and off you go. You are skating as if you were on an ice rink. Those motor cars just don't stop. James Fuller pulling off onto the side of the circuit. He said, that's enough for me. I don't want to play in this game anymore. I'm taking my ball, I'm going home. Right now, it is all about the lead, though, and Quinton Thompson is the man to beat, the rain master, because he's got this car absolutely dialed. Adrian Dalton on his tail, looking for a way to try and catch up and map. Uh, oh. Not going to do it that way, Adrian. Uh, Adrian throwing it away. He's trying really, really hard. He can see that Quinton is just, uh, just right there, but uh, he has to wait for Chad to go by. Yes, Peter Thompson. Peter is trying to just maintain championship points. He's a wily old fox, Peter. He's been at this game for a long, long time. He'll sit there and allow the guys to spin off in front of him in the rain, and he'll gather up the points. Yeah, the younger driver's also not holding back anything now. We're at seven laps to go, so about uh, a third of the race completed. As we see Class B's and C's getting in amongst each other, that's Daniel Sebastian just ahead of him. Is uh, Looks like that was Alma Cruiser, yes, and look at that. Jason Finney's got through too, so Jason Finney has actually got ahead of Alma in her old car. Absolutely, but a great job here by Charles Smallberger as well. He's doing the first ever wet race in a golf that he, in his life, and he's doing a great job. He hasn't lost it, he hasn't spun off, and he's probably sitting there studying as, as the laps go by. Not easy conditions, but as you can see, as the race went on and the sun stayed out, it dried up very, very quickly. We're on the final lap, and Adrian Dalton is not going to uh, see the front end of the podium today in the second race. But as we go on board with him now into Age of Corner, you can see that the Coastal Kitchens machine of Chad Bartram is the guy he's got to try and catch, and he's spun it again! Oh, and Mini spins it too, so the two of them losing it on the final lap. Go, Derek! Don't stop, but put it in gear and drive! Yeah, there's a drag race out of the sand, but let's get, get it out there as fast as you can. As you saw there, Greg, a dry line was uh, the line to stay on, and these guys just put two wheels off, and that was enough. Peter Thompson is now in third place. Yanni van Rooyen in fourth. The two older category men out there giving each other absolute horns through turn five. Now keep it on the dry line, as you said. How difficult is that to do when you want to get past? Now, as we get into the closing stages, Goldwagen corner. Thompson is the rainmaster. Quinton is going to make it a victory here in the second heat. From pole position, it's flag to flag for him. A great draft. Second place will go to Bartram. As we go on board with Jason Finney into the closing stages of this race. This is the Class C battle. He's on to the back end of Justin Taylor. Justin Taylor's made a slight mistake. Finney's going to sneak up the inside. He's going to get the drive. 1600 versus the Jetta. Can he outdo him around the outside of turn seven? They are side by side through turn seven. Jason Finney now has to get onto the brakes later than Justin. He looks across. He looks across again. Check in the rear view mirror. He's looking again. Oh, Justin, you can hear him sliding into Jason Finney. Oh, he's not going to be happy about that. Not at all. Yeah, Jason standing, was sitting watching him make the error. And, uh, but still, takes a win right in amongst the Class B cars. Confirmation there, Thompson from Bartram and Peter Thompson in third place. Finney Smallberger and Giles Derrick, the top three in Class C. Quinton, I told you at the beginning of the day, today might be your day. The weather helped you out too.
Yeah, I, I love the rain. Uh, that's help from Derek Irving that gave me a couple of lessons a year or two ago. And the rain is, that's my thing. I love it. The track is super greasy out here at the best of times, but throw a bit of rain on is Sideways City. Yeah, horrible, eh? Horrible. I just had to get enough, a big enough gap for the overall for, from Yanni van Rooy, and I hope I got it. We'll see. Jason, that was a fantastic victory, and I think a lot of experience came into play for that one. Yeah, we, you know, we took a gamble. Um, Wayne and I said at the beginning of the race, it's starting to rain, should we make some changes? And we did. We changed the car for the wet. And fortunately, it started drying out towards the end, but it definitely worked in our favour. The car was brilliant from lap one, and the Class C cars are actually so much easier to drive than the Class B cars in the wet. Um, the, the less power just makes it so much easier in the wet. I'm so glad Jason was listening to our commentary, but Quinton Thompson takes the lead in the championship points. Eddie Rodriguez in second, along with Peter Thompson. A big thanks to Goldbargain for all of this action from Swatkops in round two of the Pro Tour.